Hello, everyone. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. Welcome to the 2019 Art Portfolio Workshop. Who's excited to be here today? We are too. So thank you so much for being here. Um, I do want to start first and foremost by thanking you all for taking the time to be here today. And also before we get started, I'd like to actually acknowledge some special guests that we have in the room present with us today. So I'd like to start by thanking our Dean of Visual and Performing Arts, John Mon. Our counseling faculty who have Anybody, our counseling faculty? Robin? They're all outside taking care of all of you, making sure everyone's checked in. So to, to our counseling faculty, thank you. Um, our art faculty, if you're here, please go ahead and, and stand up. We want to acknowledge you. Thank you so much for all the work for bringing your students. This is certainly a collaborative effort across the entire campus, and I thank you all for helping us promote this event, uh, talking to your students about it, so thank you all so much. So our goal today is to help expose you to various career paths within the arts. Today is the day to explore the various career paths that exist. This event is for you, so please make sure that you ask questions during the time of the Q&A. Uh, take notes and get feedback um, that you need from our speakers as well as our university representatives. We will start today's event by hearing from our keynote presenter as well as our student speaker. And then we will have an opportunity to transition to the college fair where you'll have an opportunity to speak with different colleges and universities that are here to talk with you about their art programs, admission requirements, and give you also feedback on your portfolio for those of you that brought some. Um, so uh, just a couple of housekeeping announcements. Um, I can, if I can ask all of our guests, um, I know it's really tempting, but if I can ask all of you to please hold off from taking pictures or videos, there's going to be lots of sensitive information that's going to be presented during today's presentation. So we want to make sure um, that uh, we respect that. So I would appreciate it if we can put our phones away and our cameras away. Um, without further ado, I'd like to invite um, Dean John Vaughn to the podium. Thank you, Jessica. Okay, the word of the day is amazing. <laughs> say it with me. Amazing. amazing. Oh, that's not a very amazing way to say amazing. This is going to be what kind of afternoon? Amazing. Absolutely. We have some amazing speakers for you. It's an amazing event that got put together. And oh, there's one more big thank you that I want to offer to Jessica Lopez Jimenez and Raquel and Robin, all the art faculty, Heather, Jane, who did audiovisual, all the team that made this event happen. Can you give them an amazing round of applause? <laughs> it's really amazing to look out here and see all of the students who have come here to hear um, the speakers today, all of the wonderful things they're going to tell you about what a life in the arts is like. I remember talking to my parents when I was 16 and told them I was going to get a Bachelor of Fine Arts and after I waved them and tried to revive them after they fainted and passed out on the floor, and then sat up and said, what are you doing with your life? You know, my dad was a businessman. I remember going, I, I can't do anything else. This is what I am born to do. This is, I, I can't live my life unless it's a life in the arts. And they said to me, well, well what are you going to fall back on? I, anybody heard those words before, right? I said, I'm going to fall back on everything. I'm going to learn about so many different aspects of the arts that if I can't make money over here, I'm going to make money over here. 
And that's what I love about Sutras. We're so interdisciplinary. And I, I love being the Dean of Visual and Performing Arts here because I love going up to Amanda's photography studio and seeing dancers from the dance book department interacting with the photographers and then going over to ceramics or drawing or painting and seeing theater students and how the students work together. And that's because that is our philosophy here. So I'm so glad that you guys are, are a part of it. And I know that's part of what you're going to hear today from our speakers about how the more you know, the more... Uh, areas that you study in, that's how you become successful because you're welcome to stop by and talk to me anytime. My office is inside the art gallery, but what you're going to hear from me is dream your dream and dream a big one and dream a dream that every day you wake up and you go, this is what I'm passionate about. And it's been a great privilege for me to, I work professionally, but I also at Citrus College to people say, hey, how's work going? And I say, play is going great. <laughs> like, what? Right? Play is going great because that's what I get to get up and do every morning because I don't look at my job as work. So that's part of how we start an amazing afternoon. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce our first amazing speaker, Mr. Jackson Z. Let me tell you a little bit about him. Oh, I got to tell you a little bit about this man. And I also want to offer a shout out to Fernando Flores, who was very instrumental in bringing him here today, one of our, our amazing students. So Jackson Z has worked in advertising, video games, television, and film studios such as Lucasfilm Animation and Sony Santa Monica Studio. He is a founding member of the Battle Milk series of art books and is currently a senior visual development artist for Marvel Studios. He has taught at the Concept Design Academy and the Noman School of Visual Effects in Hollywood. Listen to these credits. They include Star Wars, The Clone Wars, The Little Prince, Marvel's The Avengers, Gardens of the Galaxy Volumes 1 and 2, Ant-Man, Doctor Strange, Thor, Ragnarok, Black Panther, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Avengers Infinity War, Captain Marvel, and most recently... Opening this weekend, and I think it opened in China a couple days ago, <laughs> Avengers Endgame. And of course, I know you guys are all the young folks on campus, so none of you are like some folks who may be living under a rock and knowing that that movie is about to break all international and national box office records. So without further ado, I present to you Jackson Z. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and introduce our second presenter of the day. Um, and I have the pleasure of telling you a little bit more about him. So Kevin Torres Spicer attended Citrus College and transferred to Cal Poly Pomona, where he obtained a Bachelor of Arts in Art History. He has worked at the J. Paul Getty Museum, the Williamson Gallery at Scripps College, Cal Poly Pomona's Environmental Design Archives and Special Collections, as well as the Kellogg and Huntley Galleries. Currently, he works as a conservation assistant for the Library and Special Collections at UCLA. This summer, Kevin will conserve paintings at the Smithsonian American Art Museum in Washington, DC. He plans to pursue a graduate degree focused on the study and research of the cultural heritage of his home country, Ecuador. If you can please join me in giving Kevin a round of applause. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for attending uh, this presentation. As Jessica mentioned, my name is Kevin Torres Spicer, and I will be uh, talking about my trajectory in the art world. Bye. But first, um, I would like to thank Citrus College um, for inviting me to be a part of this event. Um, I would like to specifically thank the art department and in it, Professor Diane Duffy. Um, I would also like to take a moment to thank uh, Professor Allison Holmes and Lori Rush, who inspired me to pursue a career in the art world. Uh, but who am I and what am I doing here today? You already know my name, and if you read the flyer, you have an idea what it is that I do. Um, if you haven't, hello, my name is Kevin Torres Spicer. 
And I have worked at places like just mentioned, like the J. Paul Getty Museum, the Williamson Gallery of Scripps College, Pop Police, uh, Environmental Design Archives and Special Collections, as well as the Kellogg Hunley Galleries on campus. I recently finished a six-month position at UCLA as a conservation assistant uh, for the Library and Special Collections. And this summer, I will conserve paintings in the Smithsonian American Art Museum in Washington, D.C. But let's start at the beginning. I was born and raised in Quito, Ecuador, and I moved to the United States in 2005. I started off as an ESL student, which means English was my second language. I attended Glaston High School in Covina, where I took my first art class during my senior year. Uh, I was glad I experienced the American high school system, but it had its challenges. Not only because I did not speak English very well, um, but because I did not know what I wanted to do after I graduated. So I applied for a summer internship at Kaiser Permanente. This internship was designed to introduce high school students to the medical field. I applied because the recession in 2008 made people realize that pursuing their dream jobs and passions was not practical. Myself, being a first-generation immigrant, I wanted to help my parents and my family accomplish the American dream. So I thought, why not? The medical field was not only practical, but also a field, um, but also lucrative, and a field um, where there will always be work, because everyone gets sick, right? <laughs> um, I learned what ER nurses do and doctors. That's when I decided that I wanted to be an EMT, which is an emergency medical technician. One of the best programs for this profession is here at Citrus College. So I graduated high school and came to Citrus College. I took uh, many, many general ed classes and electives in order to fulfill my graduation requirements. After a few semesters, I finally got into the EMT program. And halfway through it, I realized that perhaps that was not my calling. So I decided to fall into my dad's footsteps and pursue a degree, degree in business. My dad's an accountant. So I figured it's in my blood and thought to myself, this should be easy until I took my first accounting class. <laughs> I dropped it. <laughs> I realized that dealing with numbers for a living was definitely not for me. The place where I actually enjoyed being and actually put effort in was in my studio art classes with Duffy. Since I switched my, my major multiple times, I had accumulated many credits and had one associate degree already, but I was still not sure what I wanted to pursue. So I enrolled in Professor Holmes' History of Latin American Art. In this class, I did not only learn about other cultures in Mesoamerica, but the class touched up on my country, Ecuador, and the amazing artistic and cultural heritage that it has. That was my aha moment. I was born there and I grew up there. I went to church in the colonial buildings filled with gold leaf altarpieces, colossal and sometimes scary religious paintings. <laughs> I had walked through the stone streets of the historic downtown and heard all the oral histories of the once indigenous and Inca lands. All this without ever realizing what was around me. Until now. This was my calling, this was my passion, and this is what I wanted to pursue. I wanted to do what Professor Holmes did for me. I wanted to know more. I wanted to discover new perspectives in the history of South America, and more specifically, my country. This class opened my eyes to the field of art history. I immediately went up to Professor Holmes and I asked her, what can I do with a degree in art history? She looked at me in disbelief. I don't think anyone has ever asked her that. <laughs> and looking back, I would have had the same reaction. Why would someone want to study other cultures and their artistic heritage? Who does that? <laughs> Soon after this, I talked to a counselor and looked into universities that offer art history as a major. This is when I took Art 105 with Professor Rush, uh, and I decided to talk to her and let her know that I was pursuing an, a degree in art history, to which she screamed in excitement. <laughs> she was so happy that finally her job and the job of her peers paid off. They had inspired someone to pursue their dreams and passions. Like I mentioned before, I came to America from a developing country to pursue the American dream. And like many of you, that was the question that my parents had. How are you going to do that by pursuing a career in the art world? Well, I was happy doing so. I enjoyed it, and I never wanted something so bad in my life. 
I also wanted to prove everyone wrong at that point. So I got accepted into Cal Poly Pomona, one of the few schools that offers a bachelor's in art history. And here I worked at the Hanley and Kellogg Galleries as a student worker slash gallery assistant. I learned and helped with collection management, which meant that we made an inventory of all the artwork in the galleries and um, have it matched to the record in the database. I also helped with the installation and deinstallation of shows and exhibitions. I learned that a lot of the, uh, um, thought goes into the way artworks are displayed when you visit a gallery or a museum. I also wanted to remind you that I took this job while, I take, while taking 12 units on a quarter system and working full time as a supervisor at Starbucks. Sometimes you do what you have to do in order to accomplish your goals. Um, as I mentioned, I wanted to make the treasures and patrimony of South America known and inspire other scholars to pay attention to this overlooked part of the world. With medical, uh, wait, with medical, many radical groups destroying the cultural and artistic heritage in other parts of the world, I thought to myself, in order to study, research, and establish a scholarly interest in this region, the physical sites and objects have to be preserved. So I should pursue a career in art conservation. It only makes sense, right? And you might recognize this scene from the movie uh, Wonder Woman. Her character in the movie uh, was a conservator at the Louvre during the day, but she was a superhero on her free time. <laughs> Um, well, that's what the conservators do. They are superheroes all the time. Uh, look at this before and after conservation treatment. Those are some superpowers. I had done my research, and in order to pursue a master's degree in conservation, it was going to be a lot of work. Let me put this in perspective for you. There is about six programs in the whole United States. The requirements to even apply for a program are kind of intense. For example, you need one full year, which is three quarters or two semesters, of anthropology, chemistry, and organic chemistry. Not only that, you need at least a thousand hours of hands-on work under the supervision of conservators, and three, co three cover letters from them. Easy, right? <laughs> to top it off, each program only accepts six to eight students every year, and UCLA only takes students every two years. This meant that the one thing I wanted to pursue was going to be very competitive. Meanwhile, at Cal Poly Pomona, the professors encouraged me or encouraged the students to apply for internships. After all, the reality for everyone in any field is that a job prefers someone with experience. But how are you going to get experience when all they offer is unpaid internships or volunteer positions? This was another important moment for me. There was no way I could stop working and volunteer or get unpaid position for a whole summer. I was helping my family with rent money. I paid my own car and phone bill. And this was the reality we faced in our American dream. So you can have, so I learned that you can have whatever it is that you want, but you have to work for it. Nothing in life is free. So I looked into internships that offer paid positions and I came across the Getty Mara undergraduate internship. This internship intends to diversify careers in the art world by, fully, by offering fully funded internships to students of cultural backgrounds that have been traditionally underrepresented. The internship offers positions at the Getty Museum itself and in other institutions. So I decided to apply. I had nothing to lose. Yeah, the Getty's a big name, but YOLO. <laughs> so I applied for an internship in conservation. I got a call back from the Getty Conservation Institute. They were interested in me and my application. They wanted to help me pursue my goal. So I interviewed. I thought I did really well. But weeks later, I was rejected. Because, yeah, I was interested in conservation, but I did not have, again, enough experience, which was the college chemistry. Even though I worked at Cal Poly, Cal Poly galleries and I was studying art history, it was not enough to secure me a job in this prestigious institution. I was devastated. I wanted to work at the Getty so bad. <laughs> that would have looked so good on my resume and even more when I applied for graduate school. Can you imagine? <laughs> Especially since nowadays you need a graduate degree mostly anywhere. 
I panicked because this internship was paid and only offered in the summer. This meant that I could only intern for the Getty as an undergraduate two times because in two years I will graduate. I think it is also important to tell you that many of the internships or opportunities in the art world are for undergraduate, graduate, or postdoctoral students. There is nothing in between. So definitely look into them now. So for this very reason, I really panicked. While I was not able to secure a position at the Getty Center itself, I searched for an internship offered by the Getty and that was related to the conservation in another institution. This is when I came across the collection slash conservation internship at the Willingston Gallery at Scripps College in Claremont. I applied and they decided to give me a chance. They believed in me and for that I am very thankful. My internship at Scripps had two parts. The first part dealt with collections. Uh, my main project was to help with the accession and digitization of over 400 uh, photographs by Dottie Weston Thompson. This meant that I had to write the inventory number on the back of each photograph, scan them, and upload them to the database. All this while being very careful. The second part of my internship dealt with the conservation of a plaster relief by a sculptor, by a sculpt, a sculptor, John Gregory. I worked with a private conservator um, contracted by Scripps at her studio in Hollywood, and this was her studio. So uh, the goal was to remove the different layers of paint and restore the relief uh, to its original plaster look. It was painted gray over time, and you can see it at the bottom. So the whole point was to make it look like plaster again. Um, like Gal Gadot was doing in Wonder Woman, this was very hands-on and meticulous work. I was also fortunate enough to get invited to assist the conservator in the yearly maintenance of one of her clients' private collection. This was their tiny house in Beverly Hills. <laughs> this project was to upkeep and maintain their outdoor bronze sculpture collection. We used a blowtorch and solvents to remove the mineral deposits caused by water and to keep them clean and shiny. After the summer internship, a position opened at Cal Poly Pomona's um, Environmental Design Archives and Special Collections. Here is where important architectural materials are kept and collected. These include plans, blueprints, uh, architectural models, photographs, and press related to the structures or architects. I helped that director with the inventory and housing of the recently acquired collections, as well as the assistance of visitors and researchers um, who wanted to see the collections. Another year went by and I decided to try again and apply for an internship at the Getty. This time I had more experience. Four departments reached out for an interview and I accepted a position in the paintings department as a curatorial intern. Here, I learned what curators do. I felt very humbled and very fortunate to finally work at the place that I wanted to work so bad. During my internship, I reviewed the wall text of every painting in the collection in order to assess their content. Some of them were outdated, others touched up on controversial issues such as the Me Too movement, and others were way too long. The Getty and the department wanted to make sure that all their labels, all the all their labels were inclusive, educational, and accessible to many audiences who visit the museum on a daily. I also had the opportunity to write a wall label for a painting that had not been displayed for a few years. My research and writing were being displayed on the walls of the Getty. To me, that was very cool. Um, I also got to experience many behind-the-scenes instances, like the moving and rearranging of paintings, to which I wrote a blog for the Getty. I also got to see very cool things, like the behind of this painting, which my boss hasn't seen before since it hasn't moved for quite a while. We noticed some writing and many stamps, many stamps to which she, um, she became really interested in. And who knows, maybe there will be a new discovery in the coming years. Stay tuned. I also got to explore other departments within the institution. Like the manuscript department, they house one of only three colonial South American manuscripts in the world, the Maruro Manuscript. 
I got to see it right in front of me and I even got to turn some of its pages. Wow, right? <laughs> While I applied for the Getty internship, I also decided to apply for the UCLA slash Getty Diversity in Conservation Opportunity funded by the Andrew Mellon Foundation. Just in case that for some reason I was not going to be able to get a position at the Getty that summer. Well, it turned out that I also got that one too. This opportunity offered 12 students to learn all there is to know in regards to the conservation field. The opportunity consisted of a fully funded week workshop host, hosted at UCLA and the Getty Villa. Almost 500 people applied and I was chosen to be one of the 12 students. After the workshop, we had, us 12, had the chance to apply for six fully funded internships that will take place the following summer. The, funded, the funding included a stipend, housing, and travel expenses. All expenses paid, you said? You know I had to apply. <laughs> After the lengthy application process, I was selected to receive one of the six internships. <laughs> My internship will take place this summer at the Smithsonian American Art Museum in Washington, D.C. I will be working in the conservation um, of Spanish colonial paintings, since this is the area and time period I am interested in. After my internship at the Getty and my participation in diversity and conservation opportunity, I applied for a six-month um, library preservation assistant position at UCLA Library and Special Collections. Again, another very lengthy, complex, and competitive application process. There was around 150 prospects and they narrowed it down to five interviews for only two positions. I was one of the two. <laughs> um, this time, my job consisted on learning all there is to know about books and paper-based media, their care, and what to do if they got damaged. This was me on the left. Um, creating a model of a book using historical methods. Uh, the treatment varied from a preventative to a more direct approach, which ranged from the rehousing of objects to the stabilization of pigments. As seen in the picture, I am handling a 13th century Armenian manuscript, and on the right, I am helping unframe Frank Lloyd Wright's plans and blueprints for the Holocaust House in LA, uh, ready to be digitized. My internship also included more active procedures involving the recasing and spine consolidation of books, as well as the mending of lacerations, planar deformations, and infills in single pages or within a book. In these pictures, I am analyzing the ink of an eight, or 18th century Italian print under the microscope, and I'm also analyzing how a small sketch has been handled throughout the years. Here you can see all the creases, and that was done um, in the 15th century, or 16th century, 1500s. I also helped with the sewing of an 18th century children's storybook using traditional book making procedures. And on the left, there is a tiny book I found while I helped with the processing of a recently acquired collection. I also helped with the dry cleaning of a collection of Da Vinciana, which are works related or inspired by Leonardo da Vinci. This is a print by the Spanish artist Giuseppe de Rivera in the early 1600s. These sketches were made by Francesco Mezzi, a student of Leonardo da Vinci. So why am I telling you all this? I'm definitely not bragging. I mean, I should, but I'm not. <laughs> I want to serve as an example that when you set your mind into obtaining something, you have to work hard, be resilient, don't give up, and definitely put yourself out there. Aim high. Ask questions. What's the worst they can say? No? At least they'll know who you are and recognize your name down the line. Take a chance. Get rejected. Learn from it. And come back stronger than ever. That is why I'm here. That is what I want you to get out of this. I was not born privileged. Jeez, I didn't speak English at one point. But here I am today, planning to apply for a PhD in art history or a master's in conservation. I am aiming to work for Ecuador's government in the Cultural and Heritage Department, or why not UNESCO? That is why I'm here.
Because if I could do it, and if I did it, so can you. Don't sell yourself short. Make sure you get paid in your internships. <laughs> Negotiate. <laughs> you should be valued. This will incentivize other institutions, not just the Getty, to provide the same for all interns and students, especially for us, the ones that cannot afford to quit our jobs and work for free. All this so that future generations could pursue their dreams and not struggle as bad as we have. If you have any questions or, you, or if I can be a resource to you all, please reach out. Um, here's my information. And lastly, good luck. You got this. Thank you. As always, are there any yeah. questions for Kevin? Over there. Pull in the back. Can you give a brief one sentence definition of the difference between a conservator, an archivist, and an academic art historian? Yes. <laughs> um, well, the academic art historian um, is like what we do, the research, um, professors, um, the academic part of it. Um, the archivist will process collections, incoming collections, um, write down accession numbers, and the conservator works on the work that I did, very hands-on, if something's broken and we want to preserve it for the future, how to um, house it. Um, how to protect it from the elements and further um, destruction. Does that answer? Okay, cool. <laughs> Any other Any questions questions? or comments? Can you go back to your uh, information? Yeah. Uh, I think this PowerPoint too will be available somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, those are tricky situations. Um, for example, there is a mural in the Olvera Street um, Plaza that was done by Siqueiros, one of the uh, Tres Grandes um, Mexican muralists. It was painted over because the subject was controversial. It was whitewashed. And then actually the Getty was um, one of the institutions putting the efforts there to help restore it. Even though it doesn't look the way it was painted, um, it's still present. But I have not heard of the Judy Baca, but that, I mean, it's been done in the past and hopefully they'll be able to bring it back. Anything else? Any other questions or comments? Yes, sir. Sorry, what? Um, I was a library conservation assistant, so I worked at the UCLA Library and Special Collections, pretty much working on books and um, paper-based objects. Thank you so yeah. much. If we can give Kevin <laughs> Thank you for sharing your stories, for sharing your professional trajectories, for sharing your uh, words of wisdom with our students. We truly are so appreciative of you both being here today. Um, I actually uh, want to um, uh, direct your attention to the back of the room, and I know there's people standing, so we can't see them right now, but one of the things that we like to do during this event is we like to highlight the great work that you all do here at Citrus and the great work of our Citrus College students. So we have um, artwork that is being displayed right now from our Citrus College students. So as we uh, exit the room, uh, please take an opportunity to walk around and see the wonderful work that is being um, showcased here today. Uh, so um, one more um, one more thank you actually um, before we transition on it would be to the Associated of Citrus College students who um, have provided us with some funding for the event including the um, 
um, small bites and refreshments that are outside. So before you all rush out, because <laughs> I know you will, um, I want to invite our university representatives that are here today to come to the podium, introduce yourselves, and uh, share with us a little bit about your institution. And then for all of our guests today, this officially uh, is the transition to the second part of the event, which is the college fair that takes place outside. We have different university representatives that are here. They're able to talk to you about the admission requirements to their campus, and they're also able to provide you some feedback uh, on your portfolio. So if I have the university reps here, are they here? Two minutes. Two minutes, okay. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Nancy Dallarosa. I'm an academic advisor at Cal State Long Beach with the School of Art. And I have handouts. I'll be out on one of the tables, so um, please pick one of these up if you're interested in Cal State Long Beach. Um, really quick, I think uh, one of the most important things that I want you guys to know um, is that we get a lot of students that think they have to submit a portfolio when they apply to Cal State Long Beach as an art student, and you actually don't have to, and we actually recommend that you don't. So I know that sounds kind of strange, uh, but the reason for that is because with our school, you get two attempts to apply to the Bachelor of Fine Arts, the BFA. So if you ap apply during your transfer admission process, your application process, um, the chances of getting in are going to be more slim than if you wait um, and not submit a portfolio. So apply a studio art is what I'm saying. And then once you're admitted to our school, um, you'll have the opportunity to talk to the professors who are the ones that um, decide who gets accepted, by the way. Um, and then they'll actually review your portfolio while you're a student there and tell you, why don't you move this around? Why don't we add some of this, etc.? cetera? Um, so your chances, and you'll take upper division coursework to include in your portfolio. So that's the reason why I recommend that. Not because I don't feel like all of you are wonderful and capable. It's just that I want to increase your chances of getting in. We have students that then call or like, are accepted and they're like, now I only have one chance left. Because remember I told you, you get two chances. So then they're upset because now they only have one chance left. Because they applied to the BFA and they got accepted to studio art, not into the BFA. Because the professors didn't take them for the BFA. Does that make sense? Yeah? OK. Um, so the programs that we have, uh, I'm going to read them off because I don't want to forget any, are ceramics, drawing and painting, fiber, graphic design, illustration, animation, pre-production, metal and jewelry, photography, printmaking, sculpture, wood. And then we also have minors in art history, ceramics, photography, printmaking, sculpture, and graphic design. So just wanted to let you guys know. And if you have any questions, please see me outside. I'll have the handout with all the details. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'll make this brief. I'm Allie. I'm with Columbia College Hollywood. I'm a recruiter there. We have um, three Bachelors of Fine Arts programs. We have a cinema program where you learn all aspects of filmmaking and then you really hone in on your emphasis so you don't have to come in knowing that you love cinematography. You get to choose um, what you're most passionate about after really getting in there and, and experiencing everything. We're a super small school. We only have about 550 students, and all of our faculty members are working professionals in the industry. So our second BFA program is in visual effects. We have um, emphases in animation, in compositing, and in digital modeling. Again, you'll get, to choose, you'll get to experience all three of those emphases before you really hone in on your craft. And the third, we have a BFA in graphic design and interactive media, where we have emphases in graphic design, interactive media, anything user experience based, and digital marketing. So again, you get to choose, you get to experience a little bit of everything, and then you really hone in on your emphasis. So what's really cool, if you're interested in visual effects, um, we are also a film school. So if you're an animator, you'll have actors to voice your characters, you'll have um, screenwriters to write for you. So we're all about collaboration in our school. And like I said, right off the bat, it's really hands-on. You're jumping right in to your major. Thanks. Come see me at the table.
Hi everyone, thanks so much for having me here today. My name is Nikki Klepper and I'm from the UCLA School of the Arts and Architecture. We distribute five different Bachelor of Arts programs that span from a traditional fine arts program where we have painting, drawing, sculpture, photography, ceramics, and something called new genres, which is a little bit more mixed media, maybe some installation work, a little bit of textile work. We also have another program called Design Media Arts, which is also studio-based, but it's looking at how we can use technology in creative ways. So we have some virtual reality technology class, we have some user experience, user interface classes, videography, a huge game design research lab. Uh, we also have an architecture and urban design program that looks at not only should buildings be stable and aesthetic, but how are they affecting the surrounding community. So sustainability and urban planning is really important. Um, we also have a program in dance. Um, it's about world dance. It's about learning about dance history and then, of course, the choreography classes. And then we also have a program called World Arts and Cultures, which is looking at how you can use your studio practice to use um, to use it for social justice or maybe arts activism purposes that's a little bit more academic based than it is studio but you'll definitely still be um, getting to make creative work and be able to communicate that to the community uh, we also have outside of the school of the arts which I represent we have a whole school of music and a school of theater film and television so although those reps are not here today I have handouts in case you're interested in either of those fields as well but I'll be outside and happy to answer any of your questions thank you <laughs> okay. uh, my name is Sam, I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at Art Center College of Design. A couple of you guys I think know that already. Uh, uh, if you haven't heard already, we are a faculty of professionals. Art Center College of Design is a school of just 2,000 undergraduate students and 500 faculty members, two-thirds of which are full-time in their industry, part-time with us. So ideally, you can get a mentor-style relationship in our school with someone that already has your dream job. Uh, but outside of just opportunities within the school, we also encourage you to explore the wonderful world of Pasadena, Los Angeles, as well as local, national, and international opportunities through internships, sponsored projects, and our Design Matters program, which is a unique opportunity for you to use your art to do good and influence change, which overall is the mission of my school. Uh, we do have 11 undergraduate degree programs. Six of them are Bachelor of Fine Art degrees. Five of them are Bachelor of Science degrees. But all of them are 75% studio-based to give you hands-on experience in that thing that you love. Uh, so the six Bachelor of Fine Art degrees, they are in Fine Art, Illustration, Graph Design, Advertising, Photography, and Filmmaking. Uh, the five Bachelor of Science degrees are in Product Design, Transportation, Interaction Design, Environmental Design, and Entertainment Design, which for us breaks down to Animation, uh, Concept Artistry, and also Game Design which is for those of you guys that maybe aren't visual artists, you're more into stage development, storytelling, and human psychology, the reason that we get people to play games. So if you are interested in any and all of that, uh, we're not just admitting the work here, we are admitting the student. Tell me about your ideas, the things that you want to do, and hopefully we can get you there. Again, Sam, Art Center College of Design, look for the big orange dot, and I'll see you guys in the back. Hi, my name is Amy Kells. I'm an admissions counselor as well as an alumni from Laguna College of Art and Design. Um, as an admissions counselor, it's my job to help give you guys information regarding your specific goals and if LCAT is a place where you can pursue those. We are a private, nonprofit, fully accredited college. We offer four year Bachelor of Fine Art degrees in animation, game art, graphic design, plus digital media illustration, entertainment design, and let's see, which one am I forgetting? Right, drawing and painting, okay. Also, we offer minors in creative writing and art history in addition to minors in all of the fields that I just mentioned. So if you guys are looking to get a portfolio review or you wanna talk about your transfer questions, I'll be located right outside, and I'm more than happy to advise you guys, considering I'm a member of our admissions committee, I can give you some inside information into what we look for in applicants for each of our majors. Also, some quick transfer stuff. We do accept transfers at any time. So if you guys would like to reach out to have a preliminary transfer evaluation, you don't have to guess. You can reach out to transfer at lcad.edu and send us your transcripts to see what classes you've taken and how that would match up with your would-be academic plan at LCAD. Additionally, it is free to apply to LCAD, and we are the most affordable, fully accredited BFA private school in Southern California. All right, thanks guys. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Brianna Lehman, and I work in the admissions department at I got to up a little more at Woodbury University. And we offer a variety of design programs. We have graphic design, architecture, interior architecture. We also offer animation and fashion design as well. So that's what we're really known for at Woodbury. A lot of our programs are top twenty in the nation, and we're a small private liberal arts school. If you haven't heard of us before, we're up in Burbank. So about 30 minutes from here and so your average class sizes are about 15 to 20 people so it's very hands-on learning and small class sizes your teachers will know your name so it's a really great community so uh, come check us out outside and we'll have one of our faculty people from um, our graphic design department there to look at your portfolios thank you give them a round So I just want to say one more time, thank you all for being here. Thank you to everyone that has helped uh, coordinate and put this event together. This wouldn't be possible without you all. And once again, you know, thank you to our university representatives that are outside. Please go talk to them. And to our two presenters, thank you so much. Enjoy and have a wonderful rest of your afternoon.